I think I have audio now. Try not to make the same mistake again. Uh, all right, so uh, it is Friday, the last day of our module uh, before starting the next one next week. So I wanted to go through the uh, worksheet behind me here on the greenhouse gases that you worked on this week. As usual, if you have any questions, uh, leave them in the chat and I'll address them. All right, so uh, what is a greenhouse gas? Um, as you went through this activity, hopefully you saw that infrared radiation is less energetic than visible light. It has a shorter, uh, a longer wavelength and a high and a lower frequency. Those are always inversely related. So that means that the space between each peak in a wave is greater. But as the wave kind of propagates forward, the time each peak will pass a particular point is um, a, a lower frequency. Lower frequency greater wavelength. Uh, okay. And then energy is directly related to frequency and inversely related to wavelength. So there was a specific question um, that I got about the second one. Uh, so I want to address this as well. If you pass various amounts of light through a sample, if 100% is transmitted, how much is absorbed? Um, the answer is 0%. If all of the light is transmitted, makes it through the sample, that means, by definition, then none of it is absorbed. All right, so then if 50% is transmitted, 50% is absorbed. So what we can do is look at these spectra, uh, which I believe we did last week, by following these links, and you can see what which molecules absorb infrared light at various wavelengths or energies, frequencies, however you want to measure that, and which ones do not. Um, so with these, the greenhouse gases, you'll see those, um, we call them peaks, but they're really dips in the spectrum. So instead of being straight across the top, it'll go across and then, you know, drop down. And that's an indication that that infrared light is being absorbed. So the way greenhouse gases prevent heat from exiting our atmosphere is they absorb the infrared radiation that's produced by the earth. Um, that's the heat. That's what we call heat escaping is really infrared radiation passing up through the atmosphere. The greenhouse gases capture that, reflect it back down. All right. The infrared spectrum of bromine gas that you see on blackboard um, just looks like a straight line, like So if this is like the graph and, you know, you've got your whatever your wave numbers here, all you see is just a straight line going across. There's no absorption of, of uh, infrared light there. So that's an indication that bromine probably can't act as a um, greenhouse gas. And that's true with oxygen. That's true with nitrogen. It's true with many things. Um, ozone. So um, that's another uh, important misconception, I think, that we need to uh, just make sure that you have straight. Ozone is not part of the greenhouse gas thing. Um, ozone is a separate gas that exists in the, in the upper atmosphere to filter out ultraviolet light. And so a number of years ago, when chlorofluorocarbon chemicals started to eat away the ozone layer and the Earth was getting more ultraviolet light penetrating through that, that upper atmosphere, that ozone layer, that's a totally separate thing from greenhouse gases and climate change. Um, it was still bad because it was exposing us to more UV light, which can cause um, cancer and can affect other stuff, um, can affect plants and um, ice and whatever else. But it's separate from the greenhouse effect, separate from climate change, not, not, not related. All right, so I want to go through a couple of these um, reactions if you have or some of these equations if you have spe specific questions on some of them again um let me know i'm not going to go through every single one but a couple that are that i've gotten some questions on over the weeks just to make sure that you um have the e equations right i think the first one we did together last time um so one thing that that you'll find with some of these is there are some kind of unusual things going on so for example in the first equation here we're talking about reacting with oxygen gas, which is always expressed as O2. Oxygen is a diatomic molecule, which means it always exists as two oxygen atoms bonded together to make the O2 molecule. 
Um, but in number three, there's a special difference. In really high energy situations, you can have things that wouldn't necessarily be stable. So way up in the stratosphere, there's all this high energy radiation bouncing around. Nitrous oxide can react with high energy oxygen atoms to produce nitric oxide. So nitrous oxide, um, we, was, we were talked about that earlier, so we know that formula is N2O. And that's going to react not with O2, but just O in this case, which is unusual. Normally, we don't react with just O. Um, so that, that's kind of, kind of weird. And then that's going to produce our nitric oxide NO. Uh, then we have to balance that by putting a 2 here. So that one's a little strange in that it has an extra O there. This fourth one's a little weird as well in that... Um, there's actually two steps. There's two things happening. Carbon dioxide is dissolving in water to get carbonic acid, and then carbonic acid partially dissociates to produce these other things. So you have um, carbon dioxide, CO2, and water yields carbonic acid. And then separately, I, uh, I'll just do it over here because I don't have much room. You have another reaction here that is carbonic acid dissociates to produce hydrogen carbonate, and hydrogen. Right, so two separate processes there. As you go on with these, um, the other thing that gets a little bit tricky with some of them is the paragraphs or the sentences become a little bit more um, complex. And so it may be a little bit more difficult to actually figure out what what are we talking about? What is the reactant? What's the product? And so you, the first time you write something down, you might miss something and find that it doesn't balance. And so then you got to go back and try it again and see if you can get it to balance. So um, for example, number six, denitrification in soils and oceans occurs when the nitrate ion NO3- minus, is reduced to nitrous oxide by anaerobic bacteria in the presence of water. Oxygen gas and the hydroxyl ion are also produced during this process. Um, so in that case, there's two different sentences that are both um, helping to express what's, what's going on. And so we have to really look at both of those things to figure it all out. So first, nitrate ion is reduced to nitric oxi uh, nitrous oxide. So that is um, nitrate ion is NO3. And I'm just going to leave space because there's other stuff going on here. So part of this equation says NO3 is reduced to N2O, nitrous oxide. That's, that's part of it. But there's clearly other stuff going on as well. We, we couldn't ever get that to balance um, if it was just those two. So we got some other stuff too. We've got uh, oxygen gas and hydroxyl ion are also produced during this process. So oxygen gas, which is O2, hydroxyl ion, which is OH minus, also produced. Since we, we, we see that word produced, we know we have to put those on the right side for the products. Um, all right. But now if we try to balance this, um, we realize that it's not going to work. And the reason it's not going to work is because we have OH over on the right. So we need H, we need hydrogen on the left, but we don't have any hydrogen on the left. So you got to go back into the question, back into the, the words here, and figure out where that uh, hydrogen is going to come from. Denitrification in soils and oceans occurs when the nitrate ion is reduced to nitric, nitrous oxide by anaerobic bacteria in the presence of water. So there's our key, right? In the presence of water. It didn't say, it didn't come out right out and say nitric, uh, nitrate ion plus water gives whatever or added to water. It just says in the presence of water. So that would be easy to overlook. Um, so we have to remember to put that in and not overlook it. And then we can go through and finish balancing the equation. So now we have all the atoms that we need. Um, so we can do something like this, two of these and two of those. And I think that that gets it all balanced. All right, another uh, strange thing that happens here, nitrous oxide not reactive in the troposphere, the lower portion of the atmosphere. However, in the stratosphere, high energy photons are available to photolyze the nitrous oxide and produce nitric oxide and nitrogen atom. So again, we've got this weird atom thing where we're going to have just a single high energy atom. So nitrous oxide, whoops, sorry, produces nitric oxide and nitrogen atom. 
Now that's a pretty simple equation already balanced with, with ones as the coefficients. Uh, but what do we, do we have to do something about this photon stuff? Well, photons are uh, light, are energy, and those don't necessarily need to be in the equation um, because they don't have mass. So sometimes you'll see something written above the uh, arrow here that indicates that energy is being added, like a little um, lightning shaped arrow or H nu, which is the equation for uh, light, but it's not actually, it's not totally necessary. We just balanced equation, which we have here. All right, so the other question you might have um, or that I, that I got this week about this one was uh, for part C, when we look at these processes, are these things that are human made or natural? Um, and sometimes it's not entirely clear, but I would say whenever you see something happening as a result of burning something, um, energy production, agriculture, um, things like those types of processes that humans do to extract or use natural resources, that's the clue that those things are, are the human made things. So for example, uh, number eight, photosynthesis, that's going to be a natural process. Um, number nine, organic material and anaerobic environments. I mean, that itself could be natural, but the fact that it that the examples here are rice patties, landfills, domestic sewage, that's all stuff that people are doing. Right? So that would be um, an example of a human-made or anthropogenic process. Number 10, also, again, producing this for cement production, heating this stuff above 500 degrees. You know, that's maybe something that happens naturally somewhere in the middle of the earth or something. But um, in this case, dealing with cement production, that's certainly something that humans are doing. All right, so that was this worksheet. Um, I am uh, excited to see your other work, particularly the um, at-home experiments, which are always fun to watch and the um, uh, scientific papers that you found interested to see what you're interested in. Next week, we're going to start on the final project, which is also going to deal with um, finding research papers, reading them on a topic of your choice and and writing about that interpretation of those of those experiments. So um, that should be interesting. We're also going to look at acids and bases and um, maybe some food stuff as well. All right, so um, just general organizational stuff before we sign off for the week. Um, I did re-record Monday's video last night, so there is a, a version of me explaining the UV beads experiment that does have sound. Um, I apologize it was so late. I didn't realize the audio was, was off on there um, until somebody let me know yesterday. So um, that is... Uh, that's there for you to watch. If you need a little bit more time to complete that experiment, you know, you want to do it over the weekend or something, that's fine. Um, I'm a little bit behind on grading anyway, so stuff as it, as it comes in should be okay. If you still have a lot of outstanding stuff from before, again, get that in right away because we're almost near the end of the semester and there isn't going to be any more time to do it. If you um, haven't had the chance yet, please get signed up for your COVID vaccine. Uh, everybody 16 and over is now eligible in Illinois. So you can check on the Cook County Vaccine Registry. You can look at um, ch uh, chain stores like Walgreens. One site that I've been using um, that's been helpful is ilvaccine.org, which just is a um, volunteer-run website that catalogs all the places in Illinois that have available vaccine. And um, I've had pretty good luck finding stuff, so I assume that if you can, uh, that you'll be able to find a spot. You may have to um, wait a little bit, but you should be able to get it. So that is a great way to help stop this before it um, comes back in another massive surge and hurts people. So go out and get your vaccines and uh, wear your sunscreen as it's getting warmer out there and we can spend more time outside. And yeah, we'll get started on the next module next week. I'm I'm not planning to like load up a bunch of work at the end of the semester. So, you know, we've got a final project coming up and otherwise it'll be the normal stuff that you're used to. The article report you did this week on the scientific report, that's going to be the last one for the semester. We're not going to do another one next week um, because the final project is deals with articles and things anyway. So that'll be done. There's one more at-home experiment to propose and complete. And um, yeah, then, then 
then we're pretty much done. So um, hopefully everything's going okay with you. And I will see you Monday. Uh, again, let me know if you have questions or if things come up along the way. Bye, everybody.